Shooting concerts is my favorite kind of photography because not only is it fun to do, but you can really experiment with your edits. Now, in my opinion, there's no substitute for a single great shot, a great photo that really captures a moment and the essence of what that show was like. But sometimes if you want to convey to your viewers just what the whole experience was like, what it felt like, the energy, what the environment was like, Blending photos together is a great way to accomplish that. So today I'm going to show you a quick rip method on how you can create dynamic concert photos that'll take your shots from looking like this to this. This is a great method to try if you're looking to do something different, or maybe you didn't get that one shot that you were hoping for. And the best thing about the method I'm about to show you is that you don't even have to have great photos to begin with. So before we dive into Photoshop, there's a few things you need to do to prep for your edit. Think about what you wanna convey to the person viewing your photos. In my case, I was shooting night one of 311's annual 311 day event in Las Vegas. So I wanted the person who would see my photos to know that. I captured the unique environment surrounding the event with contextual shots. And when you're doing this, these photos don't have to be anything spectacular. The most important thing is that they exist. Just get them. All right, so let's dive into Photoshop and I'll show you what I did with this particular photo so that you can maybe take some of these methods and apply it to your own work. All right, so we are in Photoshop. This is Nick Hexum. He's the front man of 311. Great band, check him out if you've never seen him before. And I took this shot with the Sony a7C2 and the 20 to 70 millimeter F4 lens. First show I've shot with that combo and, and I love the result. I think this is a cool shot, but we're gonna go from this to this in this tutorial. So let's start from the start. We just have the shot of him. First thing we're gonna do is select our subject. And by the way, this isn't gonna be using any like um, smart objects or anything. This is just gonna show you how to do this quick rip style with just basic tools. It's actually really easy. So we have our subject selected here. Hit Command J to duplicate our subject. Now the next thing we're going to do is go through our contextual shots. See, these are nothing great. They are just photos that I took around the venue to give you context of what was going on. And then we're going to have a texture at the end that we're going to throw over the top of it. So the first thing we're going to do is grab this shot, drag it over. We want to put this under our selected subject, size it up to make it fit in here and frame it nice. So then the key to all of this is the blend modes. So go over here to the right. And when you're doing this to whatever photo you want to do, just pick the blend mode that, that works for your shot and play around. Don't be afraid to experiment. It's actually a lot of fun. And as you can see, all of these in their own way look pretty cool. Uh, but for the sake of the set, it, we're going to go with overlay. And honestly, that looks like it could be done. I mean, that looks cool but we're not done. We're actually just getting started. So now that we have that context, the 311 day sign, let's actually move that up just a little bit, get more of the band's name in there. The next thing we're gonna do is add one of those contextual shots like this, Park MGM. This is the casino that it was at in Las Vegas. Drag this over, size it down. Let's turn it a little bit. And we're gonna use another blend mode after we move this behind our subject. And this time, you know, lighten and screen both look really good. We get a little more color with screen. Let's go with screen. Put that wherever you want to put it. And we just repeat. Let's go grab this one, Dolby Live, which is the theater inside of Park MGM in Las Vegas. Once again, just going to move this behind our subject. There's that, let's play around with our blend modes. For this one, I think lighten looks all right. All right, next we have the crowd. By the way, what a light show at this. Looked like a Pink Floyd concert in there. Amazing. So we'll drag this over. And crowd shots always work great on the bottom of the screen. Put this wherever you want. Check our blend modes again. You know, for this one, let's go screen. All right, so the next thing 
we just want to play with our eraser just get rid of this top part where you can actually see the edge of the photo you can you know just play around with this as much as you want some people will tell you to convert this to a smart object and such but like i said we're just ripping and tearing through this so just like that we basically have the edit you know it was that easy just different blend modes most of them are just the light and blend mode and i really like the look of this but that's when I took it too far in the edit. Sometimes you take it too far, don't take it too far. I took it too far and it ended up looking kind of cool. It had like a dollar bill vibe to it almost. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna grab our texture, which you can get textures all over the internet. Just Google search them, or maybe you have a service that you're subscribed to. Just search different kind of uh, textures. This is a dust and scratch one. We'll bring this over. We'll resize it to fit. Let's go with... Uh, Minus 90 here. Get that lined up. And I'm gonna let you guess what we're doing next. You got it. Different blend mode. So for this one, as you can see, you can get a lot of different styles with this. This just looks a little too rugged. Um, keep going on down here. This, I believe, is the one I used, Hue, you know, and you just get this kind of gross dollar bill look to it. So how do we get rid of that gross color or how do we make it even grosser? Well, the best way to do that is to go to our color balance. We're going to add some reds, pull those back a little bit, you know, and on your edit, you can do this however you want, however you think looks cool. And a lot of times when I'm edi editing any photo in Photoshop, the uh, the color balance tool is a big one that I that I like to use a lot. Uh, I want the colors to pop a little bit more, so let's go to vibrance, and let's crank that up, give it some saturation, and I pretty much end all of my edits with some curves. Add those to the very top. Do what you want with them. And there you go. That was it. How long did that even take? Just, that was just a few minutes. Super easy. So if you have the right shots to make something work, it's really easy to make it work, but you can go too far really easily. So just kind of, just be cautious when you're doing this type of thing so that it doesn't just look like mush. So yeah, as you can see, pretty easy. You see edits like this on Instagram or any place you view your photos and you're kind of intimidated at first. Like, where do I even begin? But the only place to start is to start. Get those contextual shots and just play around, stack photos together, utilize the different blending modes in Photoshop, and you never know what can happen. Now, if there's one downside to editing photos this way, and I'm going to use my own example of when I posted this on Instagram, I looked back on it and it just, it kind of looked like an ad to me. It didn't look like a normal post on Instagram. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I feel like a lot of people that were scrolling through their feed probably saw my post and just assumed it was an ad of some kind. So an edit like that looks really cool, probably a really cool print, you know, it's kind of a poster style, you know, when you blend everything together like that. But for a traditional Instagram post, tread lightly. And to really bring this all back together, remember at the beginning of the video, I said there's no substitute for just a single great shot. Personally, I kind of prefer the before version of this photo before I did all the edits. The edits are fun, they're cool, and they, and they get people's attention. But at the same time, it just there's something about that single shot of Nick Hexum where you can just see him in the moment, belting it out. And you can just kind of feel that. So it's not always the best thing to do, but it's definitely a fun thing to do. And if you get the right shots and put them all together, you never know what can happen. So give it a go. Check it out. Let me know how it goes. Anyway, that is it for this video. Thanks for checking it out. As always, I appreciate every single view. Comment below if you have any questions or maybe you send me some links to show me some examples of some photos that you edited using this method. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. Give the video a like. Be in touch. And if you want to see more of these Photoshop tutorials, let me know. It's kind of fun. So until next time, be excellent. And by the way, I don't know what to call this style of editing. So since it was 311 in the video, we'll just, we'll call it 
Omaha Stylie. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, just, just call it that. 